Mr. Gatsby, I'd like to know. Exactly who are you, anyhow? With his house, his parties, and his fancy clothes. I, I love you much. We were born different from you. It's in our blood. Go back to Nothing that you do or dream up can ever change that. Recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> And that was a clip from Baz Luhrmann's uh, The Great Gatsby, released, going to be released, uh, when is it? May 10th. 10th. And this is Movies the Podcast. My name's Rob. This is Jordan. This is Curtis. This is Brenda. We're welcome back. Oh, wait, where's Dan? Dan hasn't said anything. This is Dan. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he was so generous to give his mic up today, so he might not talk as often as he did last week. This Thank is Dan God. again. I'm using Dan's mic. Welcome back, Curtis, from Paris. Thank How was you. It? it was wonderful. Bonjour. I actually, bonjour. <laughs> I, I actually went to the movies twice while I was on vacation. Well, that's right. Friends. You watched um, Two Mothers and Passions, right? I did. Um, they have different titles in France. It's Perfect Mothers, uh, oh. which is strange. And then, yeah, and then the Brian De Palma movie Passion. So the standards I, for motherhood are different in France. <laughs> Isn't it weird? I know. It's Two Mothers in. Australia and America and Perfect Mothers in France. So I have no clue. It was great, though. But It's yeah. like America and Australia. Like, we don't want to judge these mothers. You judge them for yourself. <laughs> I wonder if that's what it is. I wonder if that's why they changed the title. Well, the tr- uh, we, you, had, you had posted the trailer, and it's with Naomi Watts and... Robin Wright. Robin Wright. Uh, and when you saw the film, it was not what the trailer was implying. No, and... I, I don't know if I should tell people what the difference is. No, don't. Okay, because that's what made it so surprising, and I think what I liked and was surprised about it, uh, it's not what you're thinking. So I wonder what the American trailer is going to be like. How much did you love Passions? I mean, you love Brian De Palma. <laughs> I love Brian De Palma, and let me tell you, this movie was a piece. It was the wor- it was no redeeming qualities whatsoever. You, you know, it's a, re- off- it's a remake, right? It's a remake, and the remake is, or the original is so good. It's a tight like French crime th- sexual thriller which Brian De Palma could do in his sleep and uh, he totally screws it up he's got two terrible lead actresses Rachel McAdams and Numi Rapace and it just it falls so <laughs> flat on trying its to make face Numi Rapace happen. don't make Numi Rapace happen <laughs> I made fun of her two weeks ago on one of the podcasts for her terrible accent, and she continues with that She's accent. She's the European Anne Hathaway. She had nothing to <laughs> oh do my in God. Sherlock Holmes' <laughs> Game of Shadows. Nothing. Drink. She's like, oh, I'll, I'll just be back here. Being she she like, should have done that in this film. I figure out from the trailer what it was about. Oh, it Pat, looked, did you watch it? Uh, the trailer for Passion. Yeah, and I just, I, I was like, what the hell was that? Jordan, watch the original. It's on Netflix streaming. It's called um, Love, Love Crime. Crime. Have okay. you seen it? No, I've heard of it, but I, and you're right. They're two really good actresses. The, in the original one. Oh, yes. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's terrible. I, I'm going to have you guys watch it so you can well, see how terrible Last night it is. we were talking about it, and he told me that, um, what's, what's that director? Um, Brian Quentin Tarantino, you're yeah. telling me how he had that, you know, when directors out of their prime, that it's hard for them to get an erection, or what were you trying to tell me? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino said, for directors, after a while, you can tell they can't get it up. So, like, you know how Clint Eastwood's movies, although they're very great, as he's gotten older, they're, like, slow flaccid. and slower <laughs> and slower and flaccid. And bo- Don't get me wrong. He still does good movies, but they're just like, oh, my God, it's like he can't get it up. And Quentin Tarantino said at some point, you should stop making movies because you can't get a hard on. And I think Brian De Palma has reached that point. Has reached that point. <laughs> yeah, or I think that I told that point. I told you that, like, I don't know, like, it's in the aughts or whatever in the 2000s, ever since 2000. Um, I don't think there's Brian De Palma's made something I like. I told Rob last night he hasn't written his own movie since Femme Fatale, and I'm I liked Femme Fatale. Well, Femme Fatale is one of those that I'm talking about. Listen, sister, <laughs> I'm wondering if he if he doesn't write it, like he's not as invested, or he's just doing it to get off the couch, or I don't know, because I love Brian De Palma. And I know, like, uh, you know, mentioning that, like, Akira Kurosawa, I think, made movies until his 80s, and I think he did a good job, but, you know, he was he way past his... Yeah, well, like Martin Scorsese, he keeps <laughs> it up. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, Woody Allen's still doing movies, so... Well, I think we're officially playing the catch-up game now, so... Or we've caught up. Yeah, well, no, no, I, we're, we just lead it right into that. I was just trying to welcome you back We from slid right in. <laughs> 
Uh, anything else fun in Paris that was movie related? Uh, you didn't make it to that theater you were telling about that. I did, but um, in, in France they do, they don't dub, which I love. Um, Because in America, we like to dub our foreign films. They don't dub it. They subtitle it in French. So I wanted to see the new Almodovar movie, which is funny. But it was in Spanish, subtitled French. So I didn't think I would understand what was going on. So I didn't go see it. But I went by the... transcendent experience. Well, I told Rob they have this theater that was transplanted from Japan to France at the turn of the century. And it's still a running movie theater. And I went into the gardens... Um, but that was the only movie they were playing, so I couldn't see it. Oh, I pr- I probably should have just sat there and just. Laugh. Yeah, I, I totally would have. Just so like when you rewatch it, you're like, oh, now it makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half later, <laughs> what did I watch? <laughs> I'm like on my translator phone the whole time, like, what is happening? That's what I felt during Sapphires last night. <laughs> hour and a half in, what am I watching? Do you need a, a ha- translator? Do you need a ha- an hour and a half to? figure out what you were watching. I knew I wasn't into it five minutes in. That I was know. a crap movie. Rotten Tomatoes let me down there. Every review says it's a labor of love. It, I did, who, who loved it? Last <laughs> night I was trying to dissect why I didn't like it. And I'm okay with silly movies, obviously. But it wasn't silly. And and I, I could see maybe the direction they were trying to go. Like I was thinking of um, Calendar Girls with Helen Mirren and, yep. um, and Julie Walter and and it's a silly premise and it's lots of sight gags and it's, you know, kind of that ensemble piece. And then, um, but it's done really well and it's really heartwarming. It's really well done and it's, it's sad and it's funny, but then Sapphire's just missed the mark. They, they could have taken that in a couple of different directions. The other thing I just, I'm very bothered by people that make light in movies, but don't do it well of really tragic events. If you're going to make a lighthearted movie about, something tragic you have to do, almost do it well it's like, like if you're gonna do vietnam do good morning vietnam don't do the do, sapphires exactly exactly good morning vietnam is a comedy it's about Viet- but it, it it doesn't disrespect that experience and 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 i felt this really disrespected it, it, it felt like the experience it, of the lost generation the trailer the feature itself like it tried to convey a lot of heart but it didn't have any heart no and you know i the relationship between the the, the lead actress and chris o'dowd i i i bought that but I didn't really care much for anything else going on. No. 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 John McCain and Sarah Palin had better chemistry. Than what? what? <laughs> conservative oh my God. Well, shout out to conservative middle America. <laughs> Those of you listening in flyover states. Um, we are a flyover state. Did you just make an eight-year-old joke? No, we're joke? not. <laughs> yeah, I know. How long ago was Dan, that? are you commenting on my outdated references to pop culture and- but you know what's funny Just about it? Kidding, uh, we're going to talk about Snooki again. <laughs> if, it, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you see who wrote the movie at the end, they explained that it was the son of one of the characters. You can Ooh. see why it was kind of homogenized because the character that was his mother was like the prudish one. Like, the rest of them were sleeping around, doing drugs, and she was like, oh, no, I just want to sing and do well for my son. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was my Aboriginal oh, accent, man. by the way. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, jeez, I don't know. Well, and the other thing, too, it was kind of like... It Scarlett was almost, O'Hare. You know, <laughs> Curtis brings up a good point, because it is almost like those happy slaves in movies. It's like, or these the, are the happy... No, explain that, please. No, no I no, will no. agree with Dan... Or God, I'll agree with Jordan on that, because there's a character, and I won't say the name, because it's kind of offensive. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Where they put somebody in a movie like Mammy or like that kind of thing that was like, oh no, it's okay. We're, we have to live on a concentration camp. It's fine. We're yeah, going to be the, singers. The happiest they, people forced to live on a reservation in Western Australia. And it, it I just think it did such Southern an decadence. injustice to a group of people and a, and a really horrific. And that's an interesting story industry. too. And there are other movies. I mean, Rabbit Proof Fence is a really great movie about the last generation and Baz Luhrmann, references it in Australia, which is a shite movie. I love Australia. Overall, but, but I thought, I mean, he really handled that 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 part of Australian history really well. And, well, I think, I even think, though Dan and Brenda haven't seen it, I think... Don't go. All of us together would well, you we actually, do not recommend you, this. You guys saved me from watching it today. Good. My dad was playing hooky from work today, and we went to Sundance, and I actually... What if your dad's co-workers listen to this? Say, you sell out your he's dad? Got va- he's got vacation days. <laughs> Like, he took a vacation day. He earned uh, it. HR. <laughs> Don't say your last name. <laughs> Not like Jordan getting rear-ended to get out of that paper. I thought we weren't going there. Um, yeah, we're trying to keep it clean. Oh, yes. Oh, Anywho, uh, I had high hopes for the Sapphires. It looked super cute Wait, in the trailer. Mm-hmm. why did you have high hopes? I, I told Rob, I, I do not want to see this. And Rob said, you can leave after 30 minutes. 
which but is you interesting. Stayed. Which is interesting because the text I got said uh-huh. we can't see forty two because Curtis really wants to see South. No, Park. it was Curtis and Dane. <laughs> okay, nothing that has to do with movies, but anyhow. <laughs> Okay. So we go to Sundance today, and I had wanted to see the Sapphires, but because you guys told me or mentioned it was such crap, um, I looked into the other movies that were showing, and I saw this movie called Reality, an Italian movie. Um, I looked at the trailer, and it looked really interesting, and I went and saw it, and I loved it. It's The trailer implies that's a really dark movie. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a, I would totally call, categorize it as a dark comedy, and it's, it's totally like a commentary on... Uh, you know, pop culture and things like that. And I think the director did a really good job of it. Well, too bad it didn't make any money. We Yeah, I, we, 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 were, us. we were two of four people in the theater. Uh, I'd, I'd never heard of it until you guys just mentioned it. It's from it. the director of Gamora, and it's a film about this guy who wants to audition for Big Brother, and then he doesn't get in. And it, the trailer, like if you watch the trailer, the tone that it's trying to – the set is like it wants to go dark, but it doesn't, and so it was. It was an intriguing trailer, but nobody came out to see it. Uh, my dad, be, you know, being from working class South America, you know, found a lot of similarities, and he made a good point that um, it's not a part of Italy that you see often, in you know, kind of like touristy, you know, a, a, and trying to gather tourists or most of the movies that we get over here, but. Um, because usually when you, they talk about North uh, Northern Italy, it's you know how much uh, better it is than South Italy. It was it was kind of like a working class neighborhood in Naples, and I, I think the the director just uh, he did a good job with his comments. Well, the uh, oscilloscope, the distributor, had high hopes for that film, but I don't think I think on a national level, it just tanked. Uh, anybody else watch anything? I saw Room Two Thirty Seven, the Stanley oh. Kubrick documentary. God, I wanted I to missed see it. it. I know it. about disappointment <gasps> i was so angry i paused it twice to ask myself what the hell am i watching i paid six dollars <laughs> no. to watch it so you're saying that that movie didn't really mean that there is actually actually a minotaur coming to take us all away no is that what it meant that's one of the theories the theories are no. so crackpot. and these crackpot. are not you know it's not an interesting i i it failed on many levels it's not a good documentary it's badly edited the That's what sound I quality cheap. is bad. It's just cheaply done. And the theor- the people they've got interviewed, I mean, it's not film critics. It's not people who study film. And I am one of the, I am way into reading about movies and the, the stories behind them and why certain directors make certain choices. And I love that stuff. And it was really something I really wanted to see. It failed across the board. It came off less like a documentary and more like a YouTube video you watch at three o'clock in the morning when you drank too much beer and you really want to know how ghosts and UFOs connect. Exactly. That's the way they came exactly. off. Uh, I was expecting Jordan, that guy yeah. from the History Channel with the big hair that's like, aliens? Yes! <laughs> like, I really wanted, like, he would have saved the day. It really reminded me, I was telling my friend about it, and it reminded me of AM Coast to Coast, George Norrie, that, that call-in mm-hmm. radio show on AM radio that where people call in and say, talk about what happened to them at Stonehenge in the 70s. So. Oh, that's strange. See, the whole thing, you can actually hear that. Um, the thing is, I really, really wanted to see that, and now I'm sad because I can't go to see it. <laughs> um, I, I'm surprised because the MFA doesn't choose their films lightly. You know, they whenever whatever they book, they're very conscientious of what gets played in the image of their. They MFA. wanted people. They need some money too, and they wanted people to uh, see they it. They do just fine. I think there was a lot of hype behind it too, and they were showing it in tangent with The Shining. Yes. Which, I mean, it made you guys rewatch it. And it made me want to rewatch The Shining, and now you went to go see the documentary, and you're like, "What was this bullshit?" <laughs> I, I got to say, the one theory, the one of the only theories that actually kind of was intriguing about the whole thing. I mean, again, I could be way off base on this one. Was the uh, the fake window? I that was actually interesting. That was I en- amazing. I enjoyed that. What was that one? And there's because in the, the manager's office, there's the impossible window, um, and this happens a lot in movies. It happens a lot on TV, but in movie sets, sometimes there's especially something big and complicated like the hotel, um, that there are hallways that can't possibly, you know, if you see the outside of the hotel, then the inside, you know, that there's three windows in that room, but when you see it from the outside, there's only two. Like yeah. physically, it would work. work. You know, and that's that's kind of that surreal. That's the only theory, I think, that really held But that's because one thing's an exterior set and one thing's an interior set, right? Well, no, no, it's, it's kind of that play with, um, with, with what Kubrick does in his movies and what he did in this movie, which was to kind of, keep the audience very unsettled. A lot of the shots are, are really designed to creep you out on kind of a subconscious level. Like your, your, that, that opening scene, that flyover scene is really ominous, but you don't really know why. 
um, and there's a lot of scenes where where you really don't know why it's creeping you out, and, and that's part of the beauty of The Shining is that it it really just kind of reaches in and, and takes a hold of you, um, and you're just honestly you're just watching a kid ride on a big wheel, and it's 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 freaking you out, and you don't know why. Um, I, I, the other theories are complete crap. Well, so unfortunately, we're two for two. <laughs> no recommendations here. Sapphires um, and Room 237. I totally recommend she uh, Yeah, I saw Chernobyl Diaries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we are three for three on the recommendations. I saw a movie called Price Check with Parker Posey. I wanted to see that. Where she plays a, a corporate executive for a pricing and marketing uh, grocery store or like she does the pricing and marketing for grocery stores it's so, like the first hour was humming along and it was interesting like how grocery stores decide to price things and sign things and I love Parker Posey when she plays serious because you still love her no matter how crazy she is because she's so likable but then the movie got really dark in the last 30 minutes like really dark like you're the dog <laughs> like yeah, like oh, darker yeah. than that it, <laughs> it got so dark so then I was like oh it kind of ruined the whole thing it could have been and why are all corporate women sad like any <laughs> any corporate woman in a film will bring someone on to talk and speak for them yeah like any corporate woman like in why a movie are you so depressed ends up being a sad character like, like why Tina Fey and baby mama well yeah like why can't you just <laughs> want to work but no they had to make her character like an alcoholic they had to make her uh, she fucked everybody she could I mean, it was just like, God, I'm not judging. I really relate to this character. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a businesswoman. <laughs> you could make it. Ever in since in the right outfit, you can. But then she wanted to have a baby. and ugh. So do you recommend the movie? I do, but it, it's a good... With a qualifier. <laughs> it's a good Netflix, like, hey, let's just watch this movie. But it wasn't bad. It just... you. It went off the wheel, the rails a little bit. So the theme of the week is disappointing movie experiences. Mm, well, I'm going to change that theme because the two films that I saw... And that flaccid I, directors. And <laughs> flaccid directors. <laughs> I'm picturing all these old directors like Ron Howard and Martin Scorsese like in a Viagra commercial. Oh, when was like the last... A garage a Viagra when was the last good Ron Howard movie? But anyways. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's in the garage, the Viagra garage band. <laughs> like slow motion. Um, I watched bow, Natural bow, bow, bow. Selection. Um, oh, I love that one. I did too. I enjoyed it. Have you seen Natural? You Slash met the Shana? director, right? Yeah. It's a it's a small little story. The the lead actress is most famously known for, as the girlfriend from, is it Hangover Two? No, Hangover the first Hangover, where Stu, I'll show you. Um, the, oh. the the bitch of a girlfriend. Right, right. All the um, women in those movies are bitches. Rachel or whores. What's Rachel her Harris. Rachel Harris. I like her. Her in this little so film, much I remember her name. <laughs> in this film, she plays a woman who is barren. She's married to this husband who follows the Bible religiously, and he feels that he, you should only have sex for procreation, and because she can't procreate, they don't have sex, and she obviously has her own needs. And he gets, he ends up in a hospital, and he, he, through that incident, she finds out that he fathered another son. Oh. And he says... Through a sperm bank. Through a sperm bank. And he oh. asks... Can you go find my son for me? So it's this journey for herself to oh, to go find the son, but also kind of discover who she is outside of this relationship, outside of this man. A very sweet film. Very. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend that one. And I finally saw Sense and Sensibility for the first time. I'm so excited. <laughs> 19 years late. <laughs> yeah, it only came out in 1996. Ooh, it's an amazing old. film. It's, it's a very it's a beautiful good. film. Um, I was just telling Curtis on the way here, though. I. I felt like I had seen it, but it could be that period films kind of all look the same to me. And they all blend in. And Racist. Also, that Downton Abbey, like, <laughs> there's, been, there's been a lot of those period British films where, where you've, you've, and Emma Thompson's in all of them. Yes. Like every Thank single God. one of them. Remains of the day, Howard's <laughs> end. <laughs> exactly. Did you um, watch the behind the scenes? On this the DVD? DVD didn't have a behind the scenes. All it had was that clip that I posted, her acceptance speech, mm -hmm. a la Oh, Jane she Austen. gave it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was really cute. And the, uh, the only interesting thing on the behind the scenes for Sense and Sensibility is that village at the very beginning where they stop and it's in the movie for about 46 seconds. They spent millions of dollars and weeks building that village. It wasn't like an existing set. Ang Lee had that completely built top to bottom. It's in the movie for less than a minute. Oh, well, Curtis and was telling me that it, you know, it's Ang Lee's first... Well, it's, it isn't his first English language film, but it's he had that language barrier where he, mm -hmm. you know, you have a predominantly English cast, and so it was interesting to watch the film from that perspective. That if you're making this film, but you you have a hard time communicating to your cast, 
that I felt that watching it, he was more conveying themes mm-hmm. and and what needed to happen. Like you know, you have these characters. I, the, your purpose in this film is to be the gossip woman, and I need you to seek this out. It, but it just, don't you think all his movies are th- a theme? Mm-hmm. Like he's always going for some theme. Like don't get me wrong, he gets great performances, mm-hmm. but I think he's he's always going for this overreaching. Like you think of the ice storm, he's going right. for something. He's trying to reach something, but I don't know. Maybe that's why his films feel so distant. At distance as in... The, the, Emotional the, the, distance. Oh, okay. And there is a coldness in Sense and Sensibility a little bit. And, yeah, and that's what might make it one of the better ones. Definitely, and I think... And there are some amazing performances in it, I think it does a really great job. Yeah, it's it's lighter comparatively to Howard's End. Howard's mm-hmm. End is just a sucker punch of a film. That's right. just... But I loved it. I, I, I highly recommend Natural Selection, and for those of you who've never seen Sense and Sensibility, finally getting around to watching it. <laughs> Um, anybody else have anything? Other oh, TV shows. Uh, wow. There's a lot of good TV back. Mad Men is back. Game of Thrones is back. <laughs> Veep is back. All I so, did was watch Hannibal and Veep is back. Bates Veep Motel started on Sunday. Yeah. I didn't record. Damn it. <laughs> um, I started. I just got into sh- this new show called Supernatural. It's oh weird. Jesus! <laughs> Apparently, it's on its seventh season. Yeah. Uh, speaking. Oh, of it's it, still going. Yeah. Spe- speaking of being late to the game, I just got onto Scandal. I watched like the. F- Seven episodes, or all seven episodes from season one, like in one you, night. You're, you're not seven years late like I am. <laughs> I am not watching any TV I watched show. a movie from 1977 last night, which I was disappointed by. Oh, is that the one you were telling me about? Julia. Yeah. It's James Bond. <gasps> I love Julia. I was a little Sorry. disappointed by it. Oh. <laughs> and only because I know the story behind. Hang on. Our producer the story's not true. No, was no, the story's not true. and that it's, it's Come to find out, yeah. Right, but we found that out much later than yes. the movie was made. But the story with the Vanessa Redgrave and her, you know, the 77 Oscars were picketed um, by um, Jewish Zionist groups or, yeah. because she and she called them Zionist thugs in her acceptance speech. And then Patty Chanofsky. Chayefsky. Um, is it, was it? He said, this is not the place to, you know, air your. Vanessa winning a, an Oscar is not a momentous historical moment. She could have just said thank you or something. And he would. It was a really. You know, so I knew about that, and so I was really excited to see the movie. And it's a good movie, and Jane Fonda, I think, really brings Even it. Even Meryl Streep in her little part Meryl was Streep's so good. Meryl very first movie. Yeah. And she plays a gossipy <laughs> whore. With that dark <laughs> black hair. <laughs> she looks amazing. Yeah. Well, the, the next one that I'm going to watch... Uh, oh, I'm so glad you watched that, though. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed that movie. What is it? Taming of the Shrew with Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. So I'm really excited oh, about watching amazing. that. Oh, I saw that in high school. I, I liked it. I've never now, seen those it. those two have some chemistry. Uh, any other catch-up <laughs> sure. other catch up guys? Before we get into our main topic of summer releases? Oh. I just want to talk a little bit more about Chernobyl Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, please, please. No. <laughs> it was... Can we go horrible. one podcast where our catch up isn't only about horror movies? Uh, okay. What? We want. Oh. Julia's not a horror. <laughs> You're not going to like my picks for summer releases. Yeah, that's horrific. <laughs> no, that's fine, but normally our catch up is only horror movies. <laughs> we like horror movies. <laughs> Speak for yourself. From 1993. <laughs> Candyman? I kept thinking on our Facebook page it talks about us being outdated. And I think <laughs> it's so mean, but it's not. It's true. <laughs> What, what is so it? True. Mark Hamill? Or who did you reference the other day? That's why Curtis has Sharon Stone's hairdo from basically. Yeah, we referenced like <laughs> Jessica well, Tandy and one Sharon Sharon podcast. <laughs> well, you're not wearing underwear right now, are you? Cross your legs, Curtis. It's too you're humid. Winking Dan. at me. <laughs> it's too humid. Uh, today's uh, our topic today. We're going to be covering summer releases. Uh, there's we one. have a topic today. I totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Stay on topic. Sorry, Rob. Roger Ebert died, and we all went to shit. <laughs> I was so sad. I think we had lost that. We, we had gone to shit before he died. Oh. Oh, wait. What were you guys talking about last night? That ne- that uh, Sapphires k- killed No, him? no, no. Sapphires killed Roger Ebert. Sapphires was one we're of the last movies he reviewed. <laughs> Rob, what are we talking about today on the podcast? Rob, stay on track. Yes, we were yes. Dark uh, place. Our, our topic today is uh, summer releases. There's a lot of stuff that's coming out over the next three months that we're excited about. Oh, we're all going to. Oh. I, I got to say this really quick. We talked about before we started the show about trying to stay on topic this time. This has been the most like erratic <laughs> cast we've done yet. How, we've only been talking for five minutes. I will say that. <laughs> I will say that. Are Curtis you still like, idea. An, is this like French time or dog ears time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Curtis suggested we smoke meth before the podcast. I have and, never suggested he, it. He picked it up in France. <laughs> That's they're why you all, got through customs they're so quickly. All doing it. Oh, you're white. You can get through. Um, Whoa, Rob. 
<laughs> he said that. I not on air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just digging my hole here. Speaking of your hole, <laughs> for those of you in the flyover suit. <laughs> Rob, what are we talking about on today's podcast? Rob, let's talk about it. God, Rob, you're so off topic. Rob, can we get a pitch hitter? Because <laughs> we obviously have Look, a catcher. Let's, let's break it up into two categories, and we're going to talk about these summer releases. Please, let's get as much distance from those comments as possible. <laughs> That's your fault. Um, can we insert a, a little bumper where Dan tells people to go to the restroom or... <laughs> While he edits Take that out. Take a smoke break now for the next four minutes. Technical difficulty. <laughs> um, I like to let's cover the big mainstream films first. What are we, we talking about? Summer releases. <laughs> I'm excited about Man of Steel. That's my. I movie. am excited about. And Man I'm of such Steel. a little kid when it comes to like superhero movies, even when they disappoint me. But Man of Steel and the new Star Trek. So you're a big two. fan of Mystery Men. I hated Mystery Men. I love Mystery. You would. And a lot of people <laughs> do. I don't think it's that funny. I don't like it. And I'm talking about like the Avengers I was disappointed I by. The I Avengers was, was disappointing. Captain America was disappointing. I've never seen Captain America. Do you guys um, like any superhero movies? What, what, what superhero movies do you no. like? Dark, I don't. Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight, Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's uh, a, whenever they make a Wonder Woman, we'll dedicate a whole podcast to that. Superheroes are never. boys, Brenda. Duh. <laughs> oh, Butch <what>? boys? <laughs> Gay Maybe boys. they'll make a Powerpuff are they, Girls movie. Are they tops or they bottoms? <laughs> I don't like any superhero movies. I won't. I won't pretend I do. <laughs> All over the place. What there. were we talking about? Summer Is there movies. a point where we just hit a button <laughs> and completely abandon the podcast? We might have to reset this week, guys. No, yeah, no, we're fine. We're fine. Um, <laughs> you're excited. So you saw the new trailer for Man of Steel? Yes. Uh, I, I was, we were ta- uh, Curtis and I were talking about it last night how hopefully this is that film that. Uh, Zack Snyder finally is able to match his visuals with emotions and performances because he hasn't been able to get that yet in any of his features. I really like Dawn of the Dead, but that's because it's zombie and it's an awesome movie. It's but, well written too. It's it's a it's a tight script. Uh, but Watchmen and Three Hundred, I just I, I respect Watchmen. I can't stand Three Hundred. No, they're just like gay porn. And Watchmen is is emotionally constipated. It's it's just a, it's a it's just it's, a really weird film. And bloated with ideas. Like <laughs> it it's, really is. And Kind of like today's podcast. <laughs> I dated somebody who made me watch Watchmen Blu-ray, and it's one of those Blu-rays where it'll show a scene and it'll stop, and then it'll explain to you how that scene was made. Was it like 19 hours I'm long? I'm not kidding you. Yeah, it was nutballs. I was like, I hate this movie, and I hate you. <laughs> is that grounds for divorce? <laughs> sure, it should be. Sure was. <laughs> Oh, wait. Sorry, what? <laughs> we also have... Uh, what am I excited about as far as... Main? Oh, uh, Star Trek. I'm really excited about Star Trek. Yeah. Did you like the first one? I love J.J. I adore the first one. Amazing. I actually really enjoy every film that he's made. Oh, my what God. What films has he made? Mission Impossible, Three. Super 8. Uh, Super 8 was amazing. Cloverfield. Clover- Super no, no, no. He produced Cloverfield. He didn't direct oh, okay. Cloverfield. Matt. Well, he didn't... Matt Reeves d- uh, directed Cloverfield. Oh, okay. Didn't Matt Reeves do Super 8? No. That was that was J.J. Abrams. Oh, cool. I liked Super 8. That was a really, that was an amazing movie. I'm excited about Star Trek, for sure. Definitely Star Trek. Nerd. I am beyond excited about The Great Gatsby. Like, yes. Oh, God. I, yeah. Every trailer they post, I just like wet my But pants. even that, it's like I was telling Rob, there's, there's characters that aren't even in the trailer that are important characters, like Isla Fisher's character is a really important character in the book. And I recently rewatched the 1970 version, and it's so bland and so vanilla. Is that the Robert Redford version? Yes. And the character, not that I would talk about Robert Redford, but the characters (laughs) are just like, they don't come alive. Like in the book, they come alive. And so this movie, I'm excited because it seems like it's going to pop, like with real actors. Yeah, it's a Baz Luhrmann, so just that alone, I'm excited about. And then the fact that it's Great Gatsby, and I love you know, the 20s, and I, I read it in high school. I don't remember. I, I it, it deserves a rereading, but I'm just, I've been excited since I heard about it, I think, last summer. It's a short read, and I honestly, and not many people like all of Baz Luhrmann's movies, but I like every single movie he's done, even Australia. I think it's... It's my least favorite of his movies, but I still enjoy it. It's still, yeah. I, it's my least favorite of his, of he's, his films, though. He's bloated, but in the best possible sense. Oh, people say that about me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I need to cut down on my sodium. I'm intake. excited. I, I'm very excited. I think it looks great, and I think the actors are well chosen. I'm not sure about Tobey Maguire, the but casting uh, looks really good. And Le- can Leonardo DiCaprio finally get an Oscar? Not for Please. that. No, he, he won't get it for that. <laughs> I wish. Well, He's I love so him good. So much. He's good in everything. <laughs> We are uh, messed oh tonight. My, I don't know what's wrong with us. Uh, hopefully we'll get it Two together. Two to one night. By the time <laughs> we get to episode seven, six. six. Um, six. Are there any little ones you're looking forward to? Wait, let's stay, let's stay on topic. Main, the big ones. What else are we looking forward to? We want to talk about big oh, ones. Oh, uh, this is the end. Oh, <laughs> that trailer was all so right. funny. That the, This is the end is the, the one where all the comedians get together. For, uh, James Franco. Um, Jay Baruchel. My, uh, Michael Seth Sarah, Rogen, Seth Rogen, and they're having a party, and then it's the end of the world, and it seems very fun. Um, Is anyone else looking forward to World War Z? Uh, I am slightly. Uh, I <laughs> I am because I I like Mark Forster. I don't think he's going to pull off this big action movie, but I like Mark Forster. The expectations for it are really high. I it's been pushed back what twice. But I think yeah. it's like they're trying to convince us that we should like it, but. It's going to be one of those movies that's probably going to barely break even, and they'll be happy for that. I'm still looking forward to it. I, I don't, don't know about Brad Pitt. I'm, I, I, it's a graphic novel, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's a big fan following. No, no. It's, 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 it's actual a book. It's an actual book. It's not a graphic novel. novel. Um, there's, I, a, there's a big cult following for it, and that's making it really... There's, was, some, there's some expectations there. Oh, yeah. I was slightly excited for Elysium until I saw the trailer, and it just... I'm really excited about it. I, I really it does like look the, like District Nine. I really like District Nine, but I was hoping. I really liked District Nine. I was hoping it. This one just has the exact same tone, exact same feeling, and I just, mm. you know, it seems like Jodie Foster looks amazing. Because she looks like a lesbian. She looks fabulous. I think Tabitha Coffee got a hold of her. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's um, wondering who that is, those of you in Iowa can <laughs> Google <laughs> Tabitha Coffee. She's a lesbian. <laughs> From Australia. Oh, is she gay? Yeah, yeah she, gay. she finally came I out. don't watch she, that I show. I don't think she was ever in the closet. Did she just, you know, was like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm gay. Is she the one with the salon makeover? Yeah, yeah. That, that was the worst right. Australian <laughs> accent I have ever. Heard. You could be in sapphires too. <laughs> <laughs> don't treat me different because I'm Aborigine. That was closer. Uh, that was closer. We have a new film this year. For I, I, I would consider this a big release because it's going to be a wide release. It's the the World's End. It's Edgar Wright's new film. I'm so uh, excited oh, about that. that Simon Pegg and Nick yeah. Frost, but they haven't posted a trailer for it, so I'm just I love anxious Simon about that. Pegg. One. I, it's the third in the trilogy. Yeah, it's like trilogy? Unaf- unofficial trilogy. The Cornetto, uh, where uh, Shaun of the Dead was supposed to be the first one. Uh, Hot Fuzz was the second, and uh, third is The World's End. I love Hot Fuzz. What is people's heart on with trilogies? Why do you have to make everything into a trilogy? Well, it's I, just an idea. It's a natural order of the universe. That's There's why Religions usually include things in threes. Do they? Like the Trinity. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Stop getting so deep right now. We're taking it really deep. Um, Iron I Man 3. Ugh. Speaking of things I'm not looking forward to. Shane Black, <laughs> are you not excited? I'm not excited about Iron Man 3. Yeah. You didn't like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? I, n- yeah. That's no one's excited about any Iron writer, Man. Writer, director. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe no, let's, get, let, get no. Together. let's not compare the two. Um, no. Maybe I'll run out and see it then. What was, what was wrong with the first one? What was wrong with the first I, two? I just didn't the, the second one was okay. I didn't get into it. You call I'm yourself a fanboy. You're not, not a fanboy I never all. used that word, ever. So Jordan, you must be really excited about Fast and Furious Six, then. <laughs> I have, I am. I'm going to camp out and, uh, <laughs> and watch it. I don't know. White House Down, um, GI Joe was such a was such an emotional high for me this spring that uh, that Has I can't, GI Joe I can't come really out. Wait, I don't. Yeah, know. It, it did. Oh my god. GI Joe I'm, Retaliation. Right. Your favorite director has a movie this summer too. I know. Uh, Guillermo del Toro. Oh Jesus. Pacific Rim. What looks interesting about that? It has big monsters and robots. I'm still upset about Battleship. Dan, Shield. please back me up on this one. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> I just don't like Guillermo del Toro. You're dead to me. I first. know. I just don't think he's done anything good. <sighs> it's like he's got Dan's nuts and a vice grip. <laughs> I do. <laughs> For those of you in Iowa, del Toro, if you're Googling it, is two words. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't speak Spanish... Moving Ask on your to, maid. Moving on to this. <laughs> Brenda. This, this is going to be the episode that's going to get us kicked off. The lost episode. <laughs> Did 
you know how much work I'm going to have to put into this? <laughs> um, let's move it's on. It's going to end up a five-minute episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the small films that we're looking forward to. Anybody? Um, surprise, surprise. Well, that, oh, that, that's uh, a good one. Generation Um. That... that uh, <laughs> For, for those of you who can't see, I am currently giving the finger to Rob. <laughs> surprise, surprise, the big films I'm excited about are horror films. <laughs> what uh, horror films are there this summer? Smurfs 2. Uh, <laughs> that's the one. Well, have you, if, has anybody seen the trailer for The Conjuring? Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> he's kind of played out. I've, Patrick like, Wilson? No. Well, yes. Not Did you like out. any movies this year? <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to see it, but like they did, um, he did Insidious, it, it, he's it, done... Oh, James Wan? Yeah, he, I feel like he's done a lot of the same... Dan, if this is the bar he, 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 he compares everything to, to Zero Dark Thirty. If it isn't Zero Dark Thirty, it not, doesn't hold his interest. Like this uh, movie what? didn't have enough Jessica Chastain. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> it doesn't. It is true. <laughs> didn't have it. Well, there's Kiss of the Dam, there's Sightseers, there's... Uh, American Mary. Uh, I mean, these are all horror films just released in May, and they they all seem really interesting. Uh, the, the one the that purge. I <gasps> some kid at work was telling me about that movie. Uh, it sounds completely interesting. Purge. Have you seen the trailer? Yes, I'm drawing a blank now. <laughs> so what is? It's the one where um, the unemployment's like. Down to one percent, and oh yeah, yeah with hour, Ethan Hawke, yes, twelve yes. hours a year, everything is legal, and you can do whatever you want. Yes. And so this family decides, okay, we're just going to barricade ourselves in the house for these twelve hours, and then we'll make it through. Well, as that's happening, a man is running down a, the street saying, "Help me, help me, help me!" And the kid does a stupid, and thing. the kid <laughs> lets him in the house, and that's kind of sets up the story. Does it Ethan Hawke turn any lights on in this movie? Oh, probably not. <laughs> No, I'm actually, all the lights on are in the ha- all the lights in the house are on at the same time. It's just they have that barricade, and his kid decides to open it and let this man in. Well, I'll let you enjoy those horror movies. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited for the English Teacher, which is a little comedy that with Julian so Moore cute. and Greg Kinnear. Uh, I, it, I, it's I will say that Greg Kinnear, I'm a little over him playing the reluctant romantic lead. Uh, he has another movie that t- does the exact same thing in this. I one. mean, it's like really the only thing. Uh, what's it called? Trapped in Love or something like that? I mean, he's really he's bordering on like a stuck net, in love with Jennifer Connelly. Annette Funicello making like ten bleach, beach blanket bingo movies in a summer. Is anyone else excited about Before Midnight? No, I haven't seen either <laughs> of the first ones. Really? You guys haven't seen Before um, Sunrise or Before Sunrise? I, 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 I've I'm seen not both. Excited about <laughs> uh, this one. I've seen both of those and I like them, but I'm just wondering what else can they add to it? You know? I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they would come up with. The Kings of Summer, the, that coming of age film, that was a, a that sweet film or a trailer. Uh, I'm also looking forward to. I just the East is something I'm looking forward to, and maybe just the political Ooh. overtones. I don't know. the The trailer seems interesting, and I'm intrigued by. It. And I think so too. And I think maybe just that subject matter is interesting to me in general. And so, um, like you're interested in joining, in joining an anarchist. Oh, for group. those of you that are listening, we are going to post. A links to most of these or at least a website where you can search for them just so you don't feel like well, what are they talking about they never really explain anything that's mostly a I'm super Jordan. excited and there's no trailer no synopsis you, all you have is a cast list and a couple of pictures but for Woody Allen's new movie Blue Jasmine, Blue Jasmine. Yeah. it's got Alec Baldwin and Kate Blanchett and Sally Hawkins and Andrew Dice Clay oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, um, Louis C.K.'s in it uh, so it, like it has wow. an interesting cast. <laughs> Why does that <laughs> change it? We're fans of Lucy. <laughs> I know that changes it all of a sudden. Did you want us to awe about Andrew Dice Clay? I was waiting for Kate Blanchett. <laughs> You're like, I haven't seen a trailer, but I already don't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited. I saw I, one production still. I'm excited for <laughs> any Woody miss. Allen movie. So I, until I see it, I feel the same way about. I know like she's sometimes maybe hit or miss, but I love Sofia Coppola, so I'm really excited about the Bling Ring. Uh, me too. I I don't think her. she's that hit or miss. So I think she's only made one miss, and that's somewhere. 
And it's also called Marie Antoinette. But I don't think that was I, a miss. I, no, neither do I. I think it was it, what it was. I mean, if you take it what it was for. Virgin then, Suicides, really, Lost really in Translation, Marie Antoinette. Of a director. Oh, it's what it is. It's, you know. No, but if you watch the movie in the context of what it, she's trying what to mean. do, it's this lonely girl who, if you watch the movie, she doesn't make decisions for herself. Her life is planned out for her. She has no room to move around the cabin. And so what does she do? She spends money, eats food, and wears clothes. If I mean, she's 14. If that was a story, though, if that was a story of Marie Antoinette, then why bog it down with miscasting all these different characters. No, that's the fun of the casting, There's is casting no, strange people. There's nothing fun about a Sofia no. Coppola movie. <laughs> oh, I There's think so. negative fun. I enjoyed Virgin Suicide because I felt from beginning to end was a, a strong film. I it it might have been depressing. because people were going to kill themselves. But I thought it was a strong film. <laughs> But I, what about Lost in Translation? Nobody's no, talking about that. He did. Lost Are Translation. you serious? Don't like Lost I adore yeah. it. I adore it. <laughs> well, there's also the new Omodovar films. If we haven't talked about him enough in the last couple of podcasts, <laughs> who's uh, that? I wasn't here. Oh, it's that Spanish director. His new film is I'm so excited. It's called something different when I was in France. It's called The Excited Passengers. Yes. Right? In um, the over the uh, the Spanish title. Which I love that better. Oh, look at that. Amanda yeah. Seyfried's Lovelace comes out. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. I, I recently watched, um, what was the documentary about uh, Deep Throat? Uh, Deep Throat. Inside Deep Throat. Inside Deep Throat. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know one of the reviews from Sundance for Lovelace talked about um, Sharon Stone's performance in Lovelace and said how good it was, which for a Sharon Stone fan uh, is few and far between that we get those reviews. So yeah, um, good for her. Take them while we can get them. She plays <laughs> overweight, and okay. so I feel like that's... Oh, we, you it, know worked, it worked in Monster. It worked for uh, Charlie. For Charlie. Oh, Christina Ricci. Um, she did. <laughs> she she also put on a fat suit for Alpha Dog. So she's doing, yeah, she's which didn't same work for her. Suit. It's the same suit. <laughs> she uh, got. To, she actually brought it from home. <laughs> can, can I, I play ask, fat? Can we, I ask a question though about the titles to Rob, who runs a movie theater? Why are there different titles in different countries? Because I was watching Alien the other night. Um, it was on like late at night. And in every other country, it's called the Seventh Passenger, but it's called oh, Alien I love in the that. United States. And and it just seems like and the uh, the Amaldivar film has a different name overseas. It's the studio who releases it. How it they just depends. They they but some they things don't. Film. Some things don't translate. Like they don't translate exactly. Mm. And sometimes when you you translate something to exact words, it doesn't make sense. But it's not always the same distributor. Like. Oh. Uh, I'm so excited I'm going to use that one as an example in the US it's Sony Pictures Classic is releasing it and they decided this is what it's going to be called and uh, internationally I think it's the sale of the <clears throat> distributor that's releasing it so it, it's just a distributor oh I watched a good on Criterion I watched a good uh, little documentary about that that back in the 60s they would buy foreign films and there was one Swedish one called Summer with Monica and then it was like an art film. But when they took it to America, they changed the name to Monica, Story of a Bad Girl. Because there was nudity in it because it was European. <laughs> and so when it came to America, they played it up like it was this big sex movie. And so, yeah, that was kind of cool. Um, I think I don't know too much about it. I, It's called In a World, but it's directed by Lake Bell. And um, it's supposedly a disaster movie, but a comedy. I'm excited about that. Is that a play on the trailer? I in know. That's world. When yeah, I yeah, yeah. In a like, World. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, we haven't talked about the new Sarah Pauly movie. I'm a fan of Sarah Pauly, and this is a documentary about her. That trailer's a knock to the jaw. Um, what is it about again? The documentary is about her family, about how her father discovering who her, his real mother is? Uh. No, it's, uh, it's she sort of started making a documentary about the stories we tell about our lives and what the stories were oh, told yeah. from our parents. And so she started really talking to her dad. Her mother's passed away. She started talking to her dad about the past and started talking to her mom's friends. And this is all revealed in the trailer, but come to find out the mom was having an affair around the time that she was pregnant with Sarah. So she starts mm -hmm. to find out, like, Oh my God! Is that is this my father? Is this and the end of the trailer is her asking the man that could be her father, what was your relationship with my mother? And so it's this documentary that turns into kind of a thriller, um, and it's by Sarah Polly. And I've loved all of her movies, so I'm very very excited. Uh, I, I actually one of my favorite films with her. It's not directed by her, but it's uh, Hal Hartley, No Such Thing. <gasps> Julie Christie's in that. The, yeah. With the, yeah, the it's about monster. the monster. Mm -hmm. um, it, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. I'm not a fan, a hugest fan of how Hartley he did Henry Fool. They needed a sequel like 15 years later with Parker Posey's character who played the wife called, uh, what was the name of the sequel? Mm -hmm. I'll have to think about it. It's, it's, I think it's supposed to be her name, but I yeah, forget it's what her it name. Is. Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> John Singleton directed too, it. Too Parker, Too Posey. <laughs> 
Oh my god, that's a new hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> too Parker, too Posey. Did uh, Sarah Polly do away from her? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. And she saw. Oh um, I, am I the only one that saw Take This Waltz? I saw the the epic sex. Scene oh, I again. showed you that sex. Scene, yeah. Uh, no. You didn't <laughs> show it to me. I just walked into that auditorium. It's a. Uh, it's it's a good it's a good movie, but it's a. Uh, if you hate Michelle Williams, you'll hate her even more at the end of this film. Yep. She's a she's such a good actress. You hate her, <laughs> like you have to see it. Stream it. Did uh, you guys see the trailer for um, Now You See Me? The we were just the talking about this. Oh my god! Rob thinks it looks I adorable. It reminds me that. of Ocean's Eleven. It has that kind of slickness but to it. I'm really excited that, about it. That tech aspect where they actually transport someone to that space, and it, the, there's yeah. like there's more science than magic to it, and. I, I, I hope Isla fun. Fisher is a, becomes a thing. Like we just re- recently watched Bachelorette, and I, I loved her in that. I think she was the, the aside from Kirsten Dunst's character. I thought she was the strongest f- female character. She's in adorable. Is it Isla or Isla? Isla. 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 I'm and sorry. she's married to Sasha Baron Cohen. Right? Yeah, I think she's hilarious. She was on Conan, and she is so funny and so like smart. And uh, I brought so what Rob and I were talking about is like like we wish she would happen. And she's in Gatsby. She's in Now You See Me. So maybe she will. Maybe she'll be the new Buzz coming up. I don't up. know. I feel like it was that time, remember, when they were trying to make everyone the new Julia Roberts or the new Meg Ryan? It was like, oh, Rachel McAdams, the new Meg Ryan. Or uh, Kate Hudson, the new Julia Roberts. Yeah. But Isla Fisher just didn't quite get there. Kate Hudson's the new <laughs> Julia Roberts. Do you remember when she did like uh, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? It was She had one hit, and everybody was like, oh, she's it. I always thought she was the new Goldie Hawn. She is the new Goldie Hawn, if you follow that career. Is there anything else on the summer release schedule that you guys are excited about? Um, I know I was like kind of bad mouthing earlier um, remakes and uh, sequels, mm-hmm. but yeah. it goes back into into horror. VHS two. And I've been wanting to see VHS. As you recommended that one. Yeah, yeah, because I love podcast. horror anthologies. Yeah, and it's it's the second part to it. And then Maniac, I'm interested in because it's a european remake of an american film and i have to say i've, I've seen a, f- a few movies that that are uh, are european remakes of american films and they actually end up working out with with elijah wood maniac yeah, yeah i do want to see that well before we start wrapping up i have one last question for all you guys and i what's the last summer release that you <clears throat> that you attended that you felt was an event that you went to and you enjoyed it with the people you went, you waited in line, you, the audience was just really involved. What's the last film you attended that you just, that the environment of being in a movie theater with all these fans complemented what you were watching on screen? Oh my God, I know the answer to this. It can't be Basic Instinct, you were too young. No. <laughs> uh, snuck in. I, I saw Basic Instinct 2 in the theater. But anyways, uh, I remember mine and Rob was there. It was Sex in the City 2. It was the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> was the last time I went to the movies, and I felt like the audience was, we were so involved. We were so hurt that it was a terrible movie. We were so... I remember that. We were, like, so upset that the movie was bad. Like, literally upset. Weren't you guys... Wasn't that the last film that both of you saw at the Angelica? Last yeah. film. It shut the Angelica down. <laughs> it broke the Angelica. <laughs> broke As the we're walking out, they're just shutting everything down. Um, so I do remember For, for me, it, there's two... Um, I, 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 I'm going to say X2 as an, ex, as, as an example. Excuse me, X-Men 2, because I thought, it, I mean, it, it's one of the best comic book films, uh, in my opinion. But that audience just went nuts in the right places. They went crazy when the Wolverine showed up and that opening sequence with Nightcrawler. It just, the energy just brought, just made it so much more of an event. Uh, and then the last Harry Potter film for me. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think that was a summer release. I think that was a, a November release. Uh, it's but, a good example. <laughs> I know, terrible example. But it's just I saw it with two of my best friends that we saw all the films together. And it was a great closure to this epic series to watch them with them. So I, I, I love it. Um, I, I no longer like waiting in line for movies. So I just wait till during the week to go watch it. But... I used back in the day I used to go to those midnight premieres. Now I just can't stay up for that. There's something to be said for seeing a movie in an empty theater. Like it's a very intimate experience. Um, I can't think of. I don't know if it was a summer release or not. I know the Lord of the Rings was. No, those those were all November. Those Every, were all November. Yeah. That's the one I was thinking of. That was just like people cheering and people. Not at the Hobbit. No. Oh, that was terrible. No. But uh, people were cheering for different reasons. 
Um, but then, uh, you know, those, those kind of epic movies like that. I, I can't, Hunger Games was like that too. I know that came out in March. But, um, but you know, I, it's just, I guess Hunger Games isn't one of those. Where, where there was a lot of appeal and excitement mm-hmm. for it, but I mean, you, I guess I was looking for something that was just, it was just an event movie that you went out of your way to wait in line for an hour or two hours to watch this film. And Lord of the Rings is a good example. Lord of, of the that. Rings, I remember waiting in line for a while. I remember when um, the first. Star Wars: The Phantom Menace came out. I was about to say we. I mean, <laughs> once once it started, we knew we had wasted our time. But so um, you were in line for New Hope. We. I, I think I waited in line for six hours or something. I mean, it was <gasps> we camped out. It was in College Station, so it was people were dressed up. My friend was dressed up. But aside uh, from how had, terrible the movie was, the experience was. A it lot was of fun. amazing, and it, it it made me miss out because the the first Star Wars came out in seventy seven, and I was a huge fan as a child, watching it on TV. And I missed out on getting to see those movies that I really love, like Jaws and um, E.T. and Star Wars. That I didn't get to see those in the theater when people, when it really was going out to the theater and was an event um, of, of actually seeing those summer blockbusters like that. Brenda, uh, I'm gonna go have to go with last summer, uh, The Avengers. I think out of, out of the whole summer, that was my favorite film. I, I had I had a lot of fun with it, and it, everybody in the audience had a lot of fun. I think it was a good energy, it was a good crowd, it was a good movie. Shut it, you two. It was a great movie. I, that sounded menacing. It was okay. <laughs> I didn't Dan, like do you have any movie that you were just titillated about? <laughs> Independence Day was pretty decent. All right, let's shut this uh-huh, down. Isn't that, <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun one. People booed in Independence Day when they bombed Houston. They I, bombed Houston? And yeah, the, where they set off the nuclear bomb at the end to try to kill the ship yeah. is in Houston. That's the that's the target they choose. So they nuke Houston, and people. I saw it in Channel View, <laughs> and um, with my grandmother, and uh, people booed when they did that. And I was like, "What's going on? I don't care. <laughs> it's Pasadena. <laughs> Take it out." Well, I guess we're we're gonna go ahead and wrap up our episode that apparently was all over the place. Uh, I think in, through the magic of editing, Dan will try to make us sound through coherent the and plastic surgery of editing. I promise nothing. <laughs> He's gonna add some wah wah wahs. Have you guys ever seen The Sopranos when it airs on TBS? Yes. Or Sex in the City. It's like when it airs fourteen on TBS. minutes yeah. long. Nothing <laughs> happens. It's just a bunch of people sitting quietly in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, this is Movies the Podcast. Uh, my name's Rob. I'm Jordan. This is Curtis. This is Brenda. Dan. Thank you, <laughs> and enjoy the summer. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>